Thank you guys for being here. Um, Timber Gold, uh, we are the sleeping elephant that's uh, waking up again. Um, those of you who know Tanzania know that uh, things have been pretty tough there to get mining investment into the country. Um, but things are really looking up over the past 18 months or so. Things have really improved. Um, our shareholding is tightly held. Uh, we listed on the TSX as TEM. Um, our market cap is, at the present is about 25 million Canadian. Um, we've got uh, Barrick as a shareholder, and I'll talk a bit about the deal we've done with them in a moment. Uh, they got 5.5% of the company. Uh, us as management and insiders have got about 40%. We have three small institutions that have got a total of about 32%, and then the rest is retail. So it's a tightly held um, shareholding at this stage. We're located right in the heart of the uh, Lake Victoria Goldfield. Our immediate neighbor is probably one of the greatest Archean ore, ore bodies uh, that's ever been discovered, the Bulinhulu ore body. Um, probably will end up being 20 million ounces plus. Um, it's currently has a strike of five kilometers, been drilled down to two kilometers, and they're presently drilling more holes down at that depth. There's actually six machines that have been on site uh, if you look on Google Earth, you can see the drill pads and the machine standing there. Um, we are the immediate neighbor uh, to the west and north. Outlined in, in the golden color there is the Tembo uh, main license. Uh, we, over the dormant period that we've had over the last seven years, we consolidated the ground that we held we increased the area by 60 square kilometers from 110 to 170. And then uh, about 18 months ago, we were approached uh, very aggressively uh, in a friendly way by, by the Barrick uh, uh, people. And they said they want to do a deal. Uh, we spent six months or so agreeing terms uh, and they were very friendly discussions and negotiations. And finally, uh, the deal that we've done with them is that they will buy part of our assets or have bought. In fact, we closed just a week ago. Uh, this is the bu bully deal. Uh, they bought six of our seven licenses uh, for $6 million cash, uh, which obviously cashes us up to start expiration again. They are obliged to spend $9 million over the next four year years exploring those six licenses. Uh, any discovery that they make uh, will mean cash into our coffers for the first million ounces, $20 an ounce, and then tailing off as you see uh, there. What was really interesting for us, they also took out a one, uh, 1.5 million Canadian dollar equity stake in our parent company, Timber Gold in Canada. So good partnership. Um, they will be working aggressively on the ground, uh, they've, uh, they've said. Um, and they've got that obligation to spend, and uh, they will be drilling in, in Q3, uh, according to their public announcements. And we're looking forward to the future cash flow from that to keep uh, the Tembo project going. So we've reta retained, as I said, that area in the center. It's 32 square kilometers. Uh, all the money that we've spent as Tembo Gold over the last 12 years has been on that license. Uh, all of that money was spent during the period 2011 to 2014 when we drilled uh, extensively. This is our relationship with uh, the Bully Special Mining License. Shown in yellow there are the structures that host the ounces at, at Bull and Hulu. You can see everything there is dominated by northwest trending uh, structures, and most of those sit on geological contacts between Mafic and Falsic Metavolcanics, or within the Mafic uh, Volcanic Suite. They trend up into our ground, as you can see. They, they, some of those structures, and there's num a number of them, four or five uh, sub-parallel structures, they, they'll clip the corner of one of the licenses they're buying from us and then come back into our ground. Uh, there's been extensive artisanal workings on those structures, uh, particularly up against that northwestern corner uh, over the last seven years, uh, recently that artisanal working was cleared, but there was 1.5 kilometers of vertical 
shafts in a line, 1.5 uh, a long strike, down to about 30 meters, most of them. So our ground, uh, as you cross that boundary, coincidentally, the geology uh, does make quite a significant change. Uh, the strike of those um, metavolcanic sequences changes into an east-westerly strike. But what's really significant on our ground is, is the structural, uh, call it complexity, but it's complex in a good way. Uh, we've got a north e northeast trending set of structures, we've got east-west, and we've got the bully trend. And all three of those have been extensively mined on our ground uh, by artisanals. If you look at that map on the, the part on the left there, that's uh, showing the black dots are vertical shafts that have gone to bedrock. and they. We counted 2,800 of them, um, and we, the yellow areas is where they mined the rubble, the erosional product from those veins. Uh, we, the way we were able to map this was using LIDAR, uh, which gave us a very high res uh, color author photograph and a digital elevation model. You can see a rat hole on that, on that model. So we were able to pick every shaft and uh, rubble working. Uh, and you can see they're very extensive, and they occur in all three of those directions. Uh, we started our drill program in, in 2012, and our very first two holes, a diamond hole and an RC hole, hit really good grades. Uh, that was TRC-13 and, and TDD-4. And, uh, of course, you know, your first two holes hit grades like that. Do you think this is going to be really easy? Um, we continued to drill. Uh, we drilled in two directions. You can see we drilled from the south and from the north, mainly because of the artisanal workings. It w access was very difficult. But um, so what we have it at, this is our real prime target in Gula 1. We've got about six or seven sub-vertical structures dipping steeply to the north. Uh, we've also got a number of cross-cutting structures. And, and all of those structures are very clear on the airborne mag. Um, both the east-west, the northwest, and the northeast structures show up very clearly on the mag. So that, that mag is a really important mapping tool for us. The whole area is covered by 10 meters of transported alluvium. So, uh, you know, we, we really dependent on that. So the program going forward, uh, we based on work that we did together with Goldspot about 18 months ago, where we, we basically reinterpreted everything, you know, just to get us off to a good start, because uh, we knew we would be remobilizing quite soon. We um, did this reinterpretation and they identify, identified 54 targets on the entire license area 39 of which are on that license that we're retaining. Those blue dots indicate a prioritized target according to their interpretation, and usually it's where there's intersecting structures. What will we be doing? We'll be, we'll be drilling uh, some twin holes where we got good results, defining the structure, and then starting to develop uh, resources. Um, I should go back to uh, this one at Angula 1. TDD 41 was our greatest hole, December 2012. We got 22 grams a ton over 15 meters. And quite clearly, this was controlled by a number of intersecting structures. Uh, we're expecting more of that. Uh, we, um, we've had patchy results, but this was a very similar story to what happened at Bulunhulu. I worked there for four and a half years through the mine build. And the top 200 meters was very patchy, but as you got below 200, it really kicked in. So our drill program going forward now Oh, sorry, going forward now into towards the end of the year, 7,000 meters of drilling. Uh, that'll be targeting um, structure to define where these chutes are going, and then we'll start drilling down plunge and down, down dip and define ounces, which we hope to announce towards the end of uh, half one next year, and then just continue to build resource. Um, there's a lot of smoke, and I believe there's a lot of fire, and we hope that uh, this is going to be multi-million ounces like most of the deposits in Tanzania, uh, that it'll grow and uh, we'll have some good announcements to make in the next year. Thank you very much.